I've always loved watching Terraria challenge videos from creators such as Gangnir, Happy Days, I Like Cheese, etc. But my time play doesn't really scream Terraria Pro. So I decided to play through the game as one of the four main classes that are in Terraria. My main way of playing was always as a ranger slash mage. I'd use any means necessary to beat pre-hard mode, you know the usual bows, mini shark to deal with most bosses and b grenades slash dynamite to deal with wall of flesh. Then get the daedalus storm bow slash mega shark to deal with mag bosses, plantera and golem. Spectre armor and the laser machine gun to deal with fish run and finally razor blade typhoon with the help of the nurse to kill moon lord. This challenge throws all of this out the window, because I decided to play through the whole game as the melee class. Which means I can only use weapons that specifically deal melee damage. Without further ado, let's begin. Target number one is either the King Slime or the Eye of Cthulhu. Now in normal playthroughs I usually skip the King Slime fight, so at this time I'm not sure if I'll even bother with it. Regardless, every playthrough must start with gathering wood and exploration. My first dive into a cave went about as expected. I ran into some slimes and died. But that didn't discourage me. I built a simple house for a guide to move in and went exploring. Left of my new house was a desert and luckily it generated a pyramid as well. Not only was there a pyramid, but in the treasure room chest there was a sandstorm in a bottle. Which is by far my most favorite blank in a bottle accessory because it almost acts like a poor man's rocket boots. Just look how high you can jump. After that I collected some cactus and warped back home. With my newly made cactus armor and sword, I continued my work on a elevator. I used rope to easily get up and down the elevator, so when I ran out, I decided to do some more exploration on the surface. To the left of my house is a crimson biome and it's really really close. This could become a problem in hard mode when the world evil starts expanding more aggressively. Not that I have much chance of dealing with it now, so I swiftly turn around and explore the world beyond the desert biome. Beyond the desert biome I find the forest and the jungle biome. In search of some helpful accessories I rush into the underground jungle and die almost immediately. After I respawn I get to the jungle as fast as I can and this time I have a plan. Whenever an enemy comes close, just say no and build a safety box 5000, aka panic and place dirt everywhere. After that I carefully loot the chest and warp back home. After those encounters with jungle enemies I figured my equipment isn't good enough, so I went mining for some materials. And oh boy did I get a lot. Cue the mining montage. I also found the mushroom biome and a ton of hard crystals. I 
At home I crafted some better gear and built wooden boxes for more NPCs to move in. Listen, I'd build something prettier, but I'm no master builder, okay? This will have to suffice for now. With better gear I felt ready to take on the jungle again. It was much easier than last time, I even found some minecart tracks and loot chests. The first chest was a disappointment, it only had a maze which I was already using, second chest had an anklet of the wind, better than nothing I guess, third chest had a radar and I actually like these information accessories, so I didn't mind it that much. I found a few more chests but they had nothing helpful inside. Feeling proud of my jungle expedition, I warped back home and sorted my chests. Sadly, a boomstick that I found is useless to me in this playthrough, so I sold it for money. Before taking on my first boss as a melee class, I wanted to try my luck with the Crimson Hearts to get an upgrade for my flaming mace. Because, you know, the Bolo hurt drops from shadow orbs, so I thought the meatball would drop from crimson hearts. But to my surprise, after reading the wiki, I found out the meatball doesn't drop from crimson heart, but must be crafted instead. So this whole ordeal in the crimson biome was completely pointless. After coming back home, I did a bit of mining and underground exploring. That was when the first random event happened. The blood moon is rising. Not wanting to get jumped by blood moon monsters, I cut my expedition short and barricaded myself at home. Then I just damaged the zombies whenever I could for some easy coins. Nothing unusual happened for the duration of the event. I got a bit bored, so before the blood moon ended I continued making a elevator. A traveling merchant arrived. I was hoping for a weapon upgrade, but instead I got some more information accessories. When I finished buying stuff from the traveling merchant, I finally started preparing for the first boss of the playthrough by flattening the space to the right of my house. Before I got to completely flatten the first hill, I got a surprise to visit by the goblin army. Knowing I don't have much time left, before the goblin invasion begins, I quickly made pits in front of the entrances to my house and an escape route in the roof. You have to keep in mind that before starting this playthrough, I haven't played Terraria for several months. I remember having so much trouble with the goblin army in my past playthroughs, so I was pleasantly surprised when the goblin pits worked as well as they did. I didn't even die at all during this event and the flaming maze came in really clutch when I was dealing with the goblins that had fallen into the pits. The only real problem were the mages, but when any spawned, I quickly focused them and got rid of them before they could do much harm. The goblin army I feared so much turned into a simple throw maze into a pit and focus on mages. Sadly, Kevin, our first guide, didn't make it. After dealing with the goblin army, I did some more terraforming and when I was done, I figured it's a good time to get the goblin tinkerer. Tinkerer's workshop and reforges would really help me out with taking down the first boss. Luckily, I found the goblin tinkerer very quickly with the help of lifeform analyzer. Since the angler moved into my house and is now occupying the space for a new guide, I decided to move the angler to the sea where he belongs. But a disaster struck when in the middle of building the house I see the dreaded sentence. You feel an evil presence watching you. My first instinct is to teleport home and rush into the caves to prevent Eye of Cthulhu from spawning. But then I think to myself, worst case scenario, it tears me to shreds. 
I pick up the last bit of courage and prepare to face my first boss of the playthrough. I didn't even finish placing campfires in the arena, but there's no time for it now. The Eye of Cthulhu has awoken. I was pretty sure I had little to no chance of beating it first try. But after landing some solid hits with the flaming maze, I decided to really try my hardest. First phase seemed quite easy to be honest. The small eyes it was spawning were just a bit annoying. The second phase seems ok too, but the real challenge are the rapid charges it starts doing when its health gets low. I dodge to the best of my ability back and forth around the arena. I get it below 1000 health. The eye charges at me more and more, but I will not give up easily. Around the 500 health mark I suffered a lot of damage when I tried to jump over it. It's gonna be close. Its health is getting lower and lower, but at the same time it starts charging more and more, making it harder to land the hit. Last 300 health it's charging practically non-stop. It starts knocking me around, my health quickly going down. The eye has 100 health left. I land a few hints, but so does the eye. It has 47 health when it finishes me off with its last attack. An absolute heartbreaker. At the end, I really believed I would defeat it first try. Well, the arena isn't finished and I didn't drink any buffs, so I'm sure next time I'll get my revenge. No reason to cry over spilled milk. Time to get back to building Angler's house. On my way back to the ocean I found another chest. Looks like I missed it because it was dark the last time I went there. Aren't I lucky? But wait, what is that? Oh you've got to be kidding me. The Eye of Cthulhu first and now King Slime. I could just teleport home, but considering I almost defeated Eye of Cthulhu, I won't let King Slime make fun of me. Let's fight. This complicated terrain was hard to navigate under pressure at first, but I figured out a strategy to slowly chip away at King Slime's health. Halfway down the King Slime is getting smaller and smaller. The sandstorm in a bottle and the rocket boots really help during this fight. 1000 health left. Not gonna lie, the smaller the king slime gets, the easier the fight feels. I go back and forth in this makeshift arena a few more times and yeah. After a grueling battle with the Eye of Cthulhu and the king slime, the first boss of the playthrough has been slain. Thanks for watching.